Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, singular tense, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies of the United States and other nations that might be tuning in, this broadcast is dedicated to us. Last week we started a study on intense abomination, intense abomination, and I would like to take up with part two here. Uh, I would like to establish a little groundwork here. What are the aged women to teach the younger women? Titus 2, um, 3, 4, and 5 says that the aged women, that would be me, this gray-haired old lady that's speaking to you, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. That's me. I've got to behave <laughs> as becometh holiness. i got to make my flesh do the right thing and keep my attitude and heart under the blood. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And then it gets into what good things I am to teach the younger women. And that I must abide in as well. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. But it doesn't stop there. It says that the aged women are to teach the younger women to be discreet. This word discreet means teach them to curb their desires and impulses. Teach them to be temperate. All right. Then it says, teach them to be chaste. What's chaste? Okay, the aged women are to teach the younger women. This word chaste includes to be teaching them to be reverent to their husbands. Teach them to obey their husbands. Teach them to be pure from carnality. This gets into the natural now. Teach them to be pure from carnality. Don't desire all these carnal things that the world offers. Teach them to be chaste. Teach them to be modest. Modest in their demeanor, modest in their outward appearance, teaching them what to wear, what not to wear. Women don't wear an abomination. We'll get into that in this study. Teach them to be pure from every fault, immaculate and clean, in our attitude, within and without. This is spiritual and natural cleanness and uncleanness. All right, last week we left off. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and 10 where we read the verse there shall not be found among you we're talking about abomination what's an abomination that there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination which is witchcraft or observer of times which gets into spiritualizing and observing soothsaying and witchcraft or an enchanter. An enchanter is one who practices the observing of times or witchcraft. And then it says, or a witch. A witch is one who practices sorcery or uses witchcraft. All right. Yahweh told them to put them to death. Now that we live under a new blood covenant, Yahweh will deal with them on down the line. Right now, judgment starts at the house of Yahweh. Deuteronomy 18.11, he continues the thought. He says, we're not to have among us, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. What's a charmer? A charmer is one who uses magic charms. You know those charm bracelets? Do you know that in witchcraft, jewelry is used? Three-dimensional figurines are used to cast spells upon. So what you wear in jewelry or what you have in your household as a three-dimensional figurine just might have a witchcraft spell on it and might bring evil within your home and you don't even know it. You say that's stupid? <laughs> well, this is Yahweh's word. We're not to have a charmer. In fact, the, the word is defies having images in our household. And an image is something with heights, width, and depth. I'm talking about height, width, and depth. Okay, it says not a charmer. We establish what a charmer is. What's a, a, a consulter with familiar spirits? That might be a witch or anybody who inquires of the, um, of the dead. <laughs> Somebody who inquires of the dead. This is evil in the sight of Yahweh. This is an abomination in the sight of Yahweh. A wizard is a male witch. Alright. Uh, and familiar spirits. All right, let me read you the meaning of familiar spirits. I want to read you something here to make an example. All right, the meaning of familiar spirits, the first example is a water skin bottle. 
Now, some people will say, now this is how people introduce false doctrine. The, the rest of the meaning of from your spirits gets into a necromancer, somebody who, who, um, who deals with uh, witchcraft, uh, one who evokes the dead. It could be one who evokes uh, a ghost or a dead spirit or the, pa- or the practice of it, one who has a familiar spirit. In other words, one who has received an evil force from hell. Now we know, now some people will say, oh, there ain't nothing wrong with familiar spirits. <laughs> we see all these signs on these, um, on these bars that say food and spirits. It's because all the perversion of darkness gets into you when you uh, drink, when you do drugs, and even, I'm going to go so far as the um, prescription drugs. We know it's not a water skin bottle. Come on. Some people say, well, that that word for me, your spirits, is a water skin bottle. (laughs) Not in this verse. They use water skin bottles to hold water so they could drink all through the wilderness. They use skins and hides of animals to drink water. But it doesn't mean it in that. It's talking about witchcraft. This is how things get out of kilter. And they do the same thing with Deuteronomy 22 and 5 and what a woman should wear. We'll get to that in a little bit. Deuteronomy 18 and 12. For all that do these things, and we just named all the things all the way through uh, verse 11 here and 12. For all that do these things are an abomination. A disgusting, detestable thing unto Yahweh. And because of these abominations, Yahweh thy Elohim doth drive them out from before thee. Now we know that when people first... Now we're living under a new blood covenant. We know that people are going to come with every kind of uncleanness in them when they desire deliverance. Yahweh forgives them, fills them with his Holy Spirit. But we keep these abominable, detestable things away from us as women. And Yahweh gets into what is abomination unto women. And unto men, of course, as well. We know that idolatry... Is stubbornness is as see witchcraft is um, that rebellion is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as idolatry okay so we can see that it doesn't have to be the actual practice of ooh, that kind of thing it can be rebellion against our husband rebellion against the word rebellion because you think the word says this and you can wear what you want to wear and live the way you want to live instead of the way Yahweh's word says that you ought to live. Yahweh's word is not multiple choice to you or to me. So rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. I misquoted that the first time. All right, let's get back into this again. For all that do these things are an abomination unto Yahweh, and because of these abominations, Yahweh thy Elohim doth drive them out from before thee. Now we know because of what I started to say a little bit while ago, is we live under a new blood covenant. Now, if so that we have received the real Holy Spirit, and not the spirit of Jezebel and Delilah, but if we've received the real Holy Spirit women, we are going to put away everything that's an abominable. If it's something that we wear, or if it's an attitude, We are going to put it away and we're going to get it under the blood and we're going to do the right thing. We're going to dress the right way. We're going to appear the right way. We're going to do everything that Yahweh's word says. But no, Jezebel and Delilah and it's coming into Yahweh's assembly. You don't have to do that. It's up to the individual. It's not up to the individual. Oh, well, maybe it is. Let let me rephrase that. We have a will that Yahweh deals with. Yahweh doesn't want robot service. Yahweh wants a crushed will. Yahweh wants a broken will. He wants us to do things, obey Him because we love His Word, not because we love our own desires. We want to love Yahweh's desires for us. So we have this will to deal with. All right. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Here we are. The woman, female gender, shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, male gender. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto Yahweh thy Elohim. Now let me read you another version. 
I'm going to read to you the complete Jewish Bible um, version of Deuteronomy 22.5. It says, A woman, female gender, is not to wear men's clothing, male gender, and a man, male gender, is not to put on women's clothing, for whoever does these things is detestable to Yahweh your Elohim. Is that clear? And um, now let's get into the meaning of this uh, pertaineth to, that the woman shall not pertaineth, uh, shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. It's the Hebrew root word keli. And this word keli, there's a lot of men and women, but this is a women's broadcast. Whatever the men do, that's their business. It's my job as an aged woman to teach the younger women. A lot of women will say, well, that's pertaining to soldiers or implements. Look, the word keli is anything that pertains to the male gender anything because the thought continues and it says that a man shall not put on a woman's garment for all that do so are an abomination women never wore pants until the turn of the century they wore undergarments underneath their dresses well men need to start wearing robes then okay well i'm not dealing with the men i'm dealing with the women and we got to go back to the old landmark Ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way, the righteous way, the holy way. And women nowadays who claim to have the real Holy Spirit, this is for you. If you, Of course, you have a free will. You can do whatever you want to do. You can make Yahweh's word multiple choice if you want to. And if someone, anyone teaches you that you can wear whatever you want to, then they're teaching you that it's okay to wear an abomination. Because women never wore pants until the late 1800s. When Amelia Bloomer traveled to Turkey and she came back to the United States and cut off her long dress that went to her ankles to her knees with a pair of pants that you could see. Now, these underclothings, this, these undergarments, kept them warm. They were not to be seen as a style. They kept them warm. Women had certain things that they wore underneath their clothing to keep them warm. They were not an outer garment to be seen. Nowadays, women are running around looking like men dress like men, they cut their hair off like a man, they take on the demeanor of a man, and now we have all these mixed marriages, abomination before Yahweh. And now the laws of the land are making it to where you cannot speak against this or share or show someone their transgression, that a woman cannot marry another woman because it's against Yahweh's word. Yahweh's word calls them a reprobate. Yahweh's word calls it an abomination. He loves the sinner but hates the sin. So now new laws are being made to where we cannot show another their transgressions. But then that would be going against Yahweh's word because Yahweh told a prophet, of course I'm not nothing, I'm just an aged gray-haired old lady sharing the truth. But if I see someone in a transgression, there's a way that I go about to teaching them. And I go to them in a right spirit and a right attitude. In fact, Yahweh just gave me a visitation. And he showed me going to a man who had a, a, a woman and a man that he was married to. And I told the man who was dressed like a woman, I told him in the visitation, Yahweh did not make you a woman. Yahweh made you a man. Do you know that the man took his measure of faith and hung his head in shame and repented and went back to live in the way he did? And Yahweh forgave him. And the woman stayed married to the man that she was married to even after all he did because she loved him. And the man who was married to... Um, the other man, as well as to his female wife, he repented, and he cut off his long hair. And Yahweh blessed them and blessed their family because of their repentance. 
But what if I hadn't told them? Yahweh made you a woman, not a man. Yahweh made you a woman to abide in the, in, as a woman. If I don't share this with you, and I see you in a transgression, I come to you in a right spirit to deal with that measure of faith that Yahweh gave you. Yahweh gave every human a measure of faith. And this is where Yahweh deals with humans from the beginning of time. But, that, that however carnal you are, and however you refuse, now you know Yahweh gives you a, that conscience that deals with you. And if you keep squashing and squashing that conscience that tells you, hey, you know that what they're sharing with you is really right. You keep, Yahweh's spirit will not always strive with man. And he'll let you go your own way. He will. But he's merciful. And he's still on the mercy seat for those who would have a mind and a heart to want to listen to the truth. But... The laws in this nation are being made that you can't correct someone. You can't warn them of their wicked ways or you're going to be put in jail. So be it. May Yahweh help us all to be willing to go to prison, to go to jail, have our heads cut off for standing for truth. So that's another thing, Mom, that you probably need to teach your children. Are you willing to die and be tortured for what we stand for? To believe that Yahweh is our God and stand for righteousness, to stand for holiness, to stand for obeying your husband in everything, your first love Yahweh and our natural husband, to dress right? Are you willing to stand for it until death do you part? Yahweh help us all that we can stand when they're chopping off limb by limb as they're cutting our head off. A guillotine would be nice, wouldn't it? It's over quick. Not necessarily quick. I did a study on decapitation. How did we get on this rabbit trail? Your uh, your brain knows what's going on up to 10 and 12 seconds after the head leaves your body. I just thought I'd throw that in there for extra measure. <laughs> Back to abomination. The woman, female gender, shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man, male gender, put on a woman's garment for all that do so are an abomination. An abomination, a disgusting thing unto Yahweh thy Elohim. And the and the uh, complete Jewish Bible reads, A woman is not to wear men's clothing, and a man is not to put on women's clothing. For whosoever does these things is a detest- is detestable to Yahweh your Elohim. What? Now think about this. We've quoted this verse, but what did we read back in Deuteronomy last week? What did Yahweh's words say about bringing an abomination into thy house, ladies? Neither, okay, Deuteronomy 7.26 said, this is what we read last week. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination. It doesn't say what kind of abomination. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thy house house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Do you wear that abomination of men's clothing in your house? Those pajama pants? Do you? It's a detestable thing. It's an abomination. And you're setting an example of abomination within your household before your children keep her at home. You are setting the example, it's okay for my little daughters and my little girls to wear pants around the house or a pajama pants around the house, but we can't wear them outside the four walls. An abomination is an abomination is an abomination. And Yahweh's word says in Deuteronomy 7.26, Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thy house, lest you be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Wow. Think about it. Well, you don't have any business getting in my personal house. No, I really don't. You've got that free will. You can do what you sure want to do, and you can have it. I want to live for Yahweh. Look, when I first got the Holy Spirit, 
um, the assembly, the old apostolic assembly that I used to go to, um, they thought it would be okay, and they, they taught strict and straight, hard and heavy, you wear long dresses, you, you're modest dress. They taught strict and straight everything. Eat right. They, they taught the dietary laws. They taught to, you know, women to dress right, to live right, to keep your heart right, keep your attitude right. And um, they started to slip up and say, well, it's okay to wear culottes. Culottes were divided at the leg. Yahweh's word never sanctioned anything that divided at the leg. And Yahweh personally gave me a visitation. So I thought, well, if the, if the pastor said it, it's okay. Not necessarily. Uh-uh. Yahweh's word didn't say it was okay to wear that abomination. And Jerry, he wasn't thinking anything about it at the time. We were married. And he didn't think anything about it either. And uh, I told Jerry, I said, look, I said, I want to go get a pair of culottes to swim in. So he gave me the money. And that night I had a visitation. And the angel of Yahweh put a pair of pants on me and put a pair of culottes on me as outward adornment now. And said, there's no difference in the pants and the culottes because both are divided at the leg. I never bought anything like it. I've never wore pajama pants since I've had the Holy Spirit in 40 years. I've never wore pajama pants or anything. If I wore anything, it was thermals to keep me warm underneath a long dress, not for style to be seen. Now look, this is Yahweh's word. Women have created this abomination over a period of years to where women have become seared to the word of Yahweh. That they can wear anything that they want. They can live how they want. They can wear anything in their home that you want. Well, what if you're naked? You get out of the shower. Come on, don't be stupid, you nitpicker. You're a nitpicker. You say, I'm nitpicking. I'm not nitpicking. I'm reading you the word. He said, don't bring the abomination into your house. If you're wearing men's apparel, Pants. Women never wore pants until the late 1800s when women's liberation came out. And women totally got out of their place. They came out of the home. They took jobs. The, the devil sure did a good job in taking our men away to where women had started taking jobs outside the home. And, and the children were thrown to the dogs. And the women quit teaching them the word. The women quit teaching their daughters how to dress and how to obey their husbands. The women quit doing a lot of things. The women uh, quit fixing their uh, their families good, healthy, wholesome meals and started slinging them these, uh, these uh, TV dinners and things that doesn't have any nutrition. Where are you, Mom? Where are you? Again, Yahweh's word teaches a woman is not to wear men's clothing and a man is not to put on a women's clothing for whosoever does these things is detestable to Yahweh your Elohim again Deuteronomy 7 26 says neither shalt thou bring an abomination don't bring that man's apparel into your house and wear it that's what it says don't bring it into your house lest thou be a cursed thing like it but thou shalt utterly detest it and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Where do you think the saying comes from, who wears the pants in your family? <laughs> because it's talking about a woman being out of her place. A woman is to submit to her husband, like it or lump it. Look, I, I haven't always obeyed my husband with the glad, glad, glads. I can assure you of that. But there's one thing I have done. I've made my flesh do it and kept my heart under the blood. And if it was something that I strongly disagreed with, I took my petitions before Yahweh Almighty. And he didn't answer me right away. Many times I had to just ride it out and wait on Yahweh. And many times more he was right than I thought that I was right. But there were some times that I was right and Yahweh turned my husband's mind around in the right direction. So this is a walk of faith, ladies. This is a true walk of faith. To stand in truth and make your flesh do the right thing. The aged women do have a right to teach the younger women righteousness, holiness, and modesty within and without, according to Titus. Deuteronomy 23 and 7. So, excuse me. Deuteronomy 23 and 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Yisrael, nor a sodomite of the sons of Yisrael. Well, what's a whore? A whore is a female prostitute, a harlot. And if you get to the root word, it goes to the male. 
It can be a male prostitute or a sodomite. This is uncleanness. The meaning of sodomite is a male prostitute. Okay? A whore is a female prostitute. Deuteronomy 23 and 18 says, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of Yahweh thy Elohim for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto Yahweh thy Elohim. My, my, my. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and giveth in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife, after that she is defiled, for that is abomination before Yahweh. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee for an inheritance. Wow. There are many things that are abomination to Yahweh. But how many women <clears throat> stop to take the time to study these things out? Why? Because they don't care. They just want to do what pleases their flesh. Women want to do what their flesh lust desires instead of Yahweh's desires for them. So that's why the aged women are to continue teaching and not be weary in well-doing. No matter what anyone says, the women, the aged women, are to teach the younger women these things. How to stand and abide within the, the boundaries of Yahweh's word in complete total obedience. Obedience to Yahweh's word, being obedient to their husbands. Okay, I have to stop. If you want to know why Yahweh is the only name of your God and Savior Redeemer, please write to Jerry or Kathy. We mail out free audio CDs and scriptural literature on why your God, your Elohim and Mashiach is Savior is only named Yahweh. Again, that's Jerry or Kathy. Our mailing address is 775 McDonald Road. That's 775 McDonald Road. Covington, Georgia. Covington, Georgia. That's the United States of America, Georgia. Our zip code is 30014. Again, 30014. Or we invite you to call us at 770-784-0703. That number again is 770-784-0703. Or, if you have online access, we invite you to go to our website where you can watch my husband's televised broadcasts using the Hebraic language along with your King James Version to show you how that the name of Yahweh has been removed from our King James Version. The website is Yahweh, you must spell it, Y-A-H, W-A-H, with a little hyphen, you must put the hyphen there, ministries.org, that's Yahweh, Y-A-H, W-A-H, hyphen, ministries.org. The purpose of my programming is to share with women, teach women, the ways of Yahweh, how to abide within obedience to Yahweh's word within and without. Yet I realize that the majority will do what they want to do. Nevertheless, I still deal with those that hunger and thirst after righteousness as the Holy Spirit of Yahweh would in long suffering if they do or they don't. If they do or if they don't, that's their choice. Yahweh does not want robot service. So, Yahweh is their judge. But, again, I am to warn and instruct whether they receive instruction or not. Ladies, I earnestly, emphatically encourage you to study these things. Stop the world and search this stuff out for yourself. Until next week at the same time, Shalom.